then they probably want to take away like a black feather, for example. Or the Baron. I mean, so at this point, the captains have been secured. The next priority is going to be on that carry uh, role. So you're going to see something like either the Baron into the Vox or banning the Rona to pick up a black feather or banning the Kestrel because mm -hmm. that's something that perhaps they know Pain Gaming plays really well. Yeah. So they're trying to avoid it. Kestrel is so interesting because in NA, you see Tribe, two, two uh, Tigers and Maxstream build Metal Jacket. And I feel like looking at EA and, and SEA, they don't build Metal Jacket against the Kestro, and I feel like that's why she's kind of more meta in, mm -hmm. in these regions, because they don't know how to effectively counter build and counter her. I mean, to that point very quickly, when I used to play competitively still, and uh, I had, I, when I played Kestrel, I would go for the Sorrow Blade into the Tension Bow specifically so that I have a little bit of armor piercing, so that if I run into a Metal Jacket, I don't have that uh, trouble. But the regular build, the more standard build right now for Kestrel is going Sword Blade, Monocle, Monocle into a Bone Saw. So you delay your armor piercing until the very late game, which is why the Metal Jacket is so effective against her. Absolutely. Obviously, Tension Bow lost a lot of its strength when uh, the health yeah. pools increased. So it makes things like this a little bit less viable, a little bit less yeah. uh, appropriate right now. I like the Vox pick here because when Trimwalker lands a hook, he can just Sonic zoom away from it and it'll detach the hook easily. Vox is a very, very strong pick. And if they pick Rona, Vox again can dance around the Rona along with the Vanguard and a Gauntlet to counter the melee aggressive Berserker uh, fighting style that Rona plays. So that leaves um, options like Weapon Sky potentially, or Baron if they pay Baron into this Vox. Could work, however, Baron doesn't have the best synergy with the Trimwalker. See, now, there's one thing I do want to question you on is because you keep saying the Baron doesn't have the great synergy with Churnwalker, but a lot of times when you talk about what goes well with Churnwalker, it's burst and AoE. And Baron is burst and AoE damage, so on paper, it feels like it would be very strong with the Churnwalker. I guess, why do you think that Baron doesn't synergize well with Churnwalker? Because Churn Churnwalker has an engage, he needs the hook. Baron is very squishy, so if you engage onto like the Baron, Churnwalker becomes not as effective. So you want like an all-in dive comp, like a Vox with Churnwalker, Rona with Churnwalker, because if they dive into a Rona and Vox, they can just dance around, ult, etc. Baron is a lot more squishy and doesn't have as much protection and tanky that can basically m maximize the fertility of life that uh, Churnwalker's hero perk gives in terms of damage reduction and damage uh, but sharing. It, it still feels like though, if you're able to stay safe, then with the Baron positioned properly, it, can't, it works really well with the damage sharing, but it's not going to be something we have to worry about in this game, as it will be the Batiste to pair up with the Churnwalker. And this one's pretty interesting. There is, again, we've seen this composition already. The amount of lockdown that you have is so strong. Yeah, and it does seem like Pain Gaming agree with you there, so they go with the Rona. I actually want to talk about the matchup between Rona and Vox. A lot of people think Vox counters Rona because he, he can kite very well and dance around her. Uh, funny enough, he, while that's true, Rona still does incredibly well against the Vox just because of how much burst she brings uh, with her kit and how durable she is, how tanky she is on that front line. So if you're able to continue on sticking to the Vox, if you use your abilities correctly, Gain the first gap closing ability uh, with your full splitter and then saving your into the fray for when he uses his sonic zoom, Ooh, you're able to stay very close to him yeah. and the matchup works in Rona's alpha favor. Alpha is a really interesting one because Rona counters alpha pretty hard. You, you, Orange can't just out on top of the alpha and they can just literally focus the alpha, mm -hmm. the alpha dives in. Trimwater can keep alpha in the ult and Baptiste can trap the alpha and Vox won't be able to do enough damage to kill either the Baptiste or the Rona. I think this is the first alpha we we're actually going to see of the tournament as well. Is this the second one? Did we Pain see Gaming one we played against Pain Cloud9 yeah, earlier? Pain yep. Gaming played against Cloud9 and, and lost. Okay, so on, on the main stream, on least, the main stage, this yeah. is the first one that we're going to be seeing. So I'm curious to see how this one's going to be panning out. Obviously, one of the favorites, at least between these two teams, but it's about time we get this game underway. <laughs> I want predictions for this one, because this one's a little bit more hard to call than the last series. Who we expect to I take I really this one? like Pain Gaming's draft. It just works together so well, all three heroes that they picked. Okay, Pain yeah. Gaming. Going to be questioning the alpha pick with Batiste and Churnwalker already there. <laughs> So definitely going to be going with Pain Gaming on this one as well. Uh, I do give gaming. the draft over to Pain Gaming, but I think Elite Gaming, uh, Elite Eight, just uh, out of better performance when it comes to gameplay and playing together as a unit, they will come out ahead in this game. All right, we have a split desk on this one. We'll see how our casters are feeling about this one. I want to know how you guys at home are feeling about this one as well. Hashtag VaingloryWilts on Twitter. Let us know if you're still awake and watching. It's time to get on into the game. It's time to pass it up to our casters and kick off the third to last series of the day. 
Thank you very much. Munchables, here we go. Pain Gaming versus Elite Eight. Now, Elite Eight have already had two games to warm up. We'll see how Pain Gaming, who have had a little bit of a rest, match up. Yeah, I, again, I think I'm on Sweet and Tasty Bacon side here. I think the draft from Pain Gaming is very, very good. Now, I think it's very difficult to call which of the two teams maybe mechanically are going to perform better as a unit or individually. Uh, I think I, I know Elite Eight are a great team. We saw them win the spring SEA championships. They both had Cloud9 to face, which we both expected realistically to lose those series 2-0. It's so difficult to call where they are, I think, individually, because, again, you, you just don't see much of Pain Gaming because, obviously, the South American region is quite isolated from the rest. The and and Elite Eight, I've unfold, seen little bits done. of them, you know, six or seven months ago, but it's, it's not like I see them regularly. It's so difficult to call. Well, here we go. Jumping onto the fold, Pain Gaming on the blue, Elite Eight over on the red. And like you said, Pain Gaming... Have a bit of a tough time as well scrimming against some of the other teams because of that distance that they have. But they are the kings of their region. And we'll see if they can take down Elite Eight. Again, Payne starting on the inside here, rotating from in to out, which is kind of what Cloud9 did in the previous series. Just means that they can get control over this central Trion. And then in the future, they'll be able to then come back to it when they have that spawn up and ready in their minds and look to try and contest it as a unit once more. Interestingly enough, I, I think we focused so heavily on Alpha in this draft, we didn't really talk about the fact that you have a, an Arden and a Vox into what is essentially a, a triple melee composition. Obviously, you have a, a limited amount of range coming out on Batiste, but you have an Arden and a Vox into a triple melee composition. Like, if you can actually kite that and kite it effectively, use that gauntlet well, double the gauntlets, you've still got a, a Vox who is very, very good at running circles around these kind of melee laners and melee junglers like the Batiste and the Brona. I mean, it could end up we seeing, like in the Cloud9 versus Elite 8 game, where both the captain and the laner, they just rotate together, rotate, 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 and they just don't actually meet each other in the lane. That is a very real possibility. As you can see, they're doing that just now. Hanyega's just rotating down with the Vox. I mean, we spoke about the Alpha as well. Their ability to kind of control this Elder Trient here is going to be pretty strong, especially when Haim actually just reaches the team. But Falcon... And as just we know, Farah are moving in. He does get the two chains here, so there's a lot of regeneration. Nice Torment in. That does actually go over to Elite Eight. Han Jaegers did manage to find it the securing blow. As the ordained onto Haim. Should be able to just walk away from that one, not a problem. Yeah, just we know, Farah. Just trying to get those ch uh, chains landed down. Interesting that official Haim's trying to go aggressive here. He's now caught between a rock and a hard uh -oh. place. Oh, yeah, Haim going extremely low. Has to pop the flask. Did. Get a little bit of speed up from the Arden as well, but now he's caught out. Anime save me, can't quite get out. He's an odd inch of HP. Bad Mojo will follow him up though. Falcon finds first blood. And you're going to see Falcon move into the side of the jungle from Elite Eight. I wonder how far he'll go. There are back camps up and available for him, and he is going to head straight to those doubles, the highest gold value of those back camps, and he's going to get them and take them away pretty easily here. Big experience boost and gold boost for him. Also going to limit what I'm sure Hein is going to get from this situation too. Yeah, Hanyeg is now just uh, forced to clear this wave out as the rest of Pain Gaming do actually end up recalling here. So they will be able to get their items on board a little bit sooner than Hanyeg can. However, Elite Eight aren't quite satisfied with that. They are just going to just start up this Elder Trian. Should be able to take it as well. No real interference. Easy money. And even Haim actually clearing away some of these front camps as well. And he saves me, might be in a little bit of trouble, like Scoundrel. No, you're no, no, no they're, they're okay. It's just, been, it's just been a fellow who's just going to move in, but realistically, a churn by himself is not going to set up anything pre level six too easily, regardless. When Jaeger's in the lane here, just farming up away, he's going to get flanked by the Pain Gaming roster who. Oh, Dane does actually land the stun there, pretty big. Oh, Torment as well, going extremely low. Doesn't quite find the second chain. In fact, he was already chained up, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. And I guess he's forced to blow the flask, however. And that's uh, also the boots burnt as well. So pretty big set of uh, cooldowns that he's not going to have available to him. Well, you can see Anime Save has actually gone for an Iron Guard contract. Not a lot of captains have actually done this over the course. I actually do this in solo queue all the time, but I'm, I'm unsure sort of its competitive viability. But it does allow you to stay quite heavily in lane without that healing flask, especially when you, you combat, combine that with the, um, the Book of Eulogies. And, you know, and so on and so forth in the laning phase, you get a lot of regeneration back. But it does limit kind of the efficacy of that contract as you go throughout the laning phase. It kind of outlives its performance very quickly. 
and then you have to like sacrifice it and go towards a fountain ASAP. But this is something I do. I, I pretty much always start with this in solo queue. But like I said, in competitive, uh, especially when you're playing a Vox matchup where you have a range advantage regardless, like it, it seems like a little bit of an overkill. But hey, it, it, he's obviously needing it because at this at this point in time, Pain are really punishing him in the lane. They're also punishing him in the jungle as well. They are moving up. Han Yeagers gets pulled in with a the torment. There's the Ordain's going to lock him up. Doesn't quite stun him just yet, but the red mist underneath the turret. Must uh, summons the courage and takes the next kill. Heim comes in with a nice interception. However, not too much damage. Can't quite finish off Muster. Good start here for Payne. Again, that composition coming through, like you said. Interestingly enough, not, not hitting the pain point of the alpha though, really hitting the pain point of, of, of the laning phase for Hun Jaeger's anime and Hun Jaeger's have gone down so far. Again, kills kind of mean nothing if you don't do anything with them. So you need to look to continuously convert your kills into something meaningful on the map that is either going to be turrets, that's either going to be things like gold mine. And it's something that, that the likes of Cloud9 and the upper tier teams do really, really well. Uh, yet to see that kind of level of of conversion from the likes of Elite Eight or Pain. We'll have to see whether they can do it across this series. Remember, the winner of this, the winner of this series gets through. You know, the winner of this series goes through. And I think actually, if it goes to a tied series, we actually get a tiebreaker in this group. So if it's a one, one apiece, it's a tiebreaker in the group. But if a winner, 2-0 winner, takes this series, that is the team that is going to go through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, pretty exciting. And uh, they would have shown much improvement as well, Pain Gaming, last year. Going 0-2, I'm sure they really want to look for their first win, or first series win on the board. Now pushing up this lane, you can see Falcon now. Starting to come online, has picked up that Shatter Glass, so he's doing a fair bit of damage, especially with those empowered bad mojos. I'm just going to move in as well, however, not really, <laughs> a, little, a little bit hesitant. He does have Aftershock though on board. And Termination Protocol available. Decent pickup of the Shatter Glass here that's going to do a bit of burst work, especially to Hun Jaegers, who's yet to prioritize any shielding whatsoever. But obviously that front line of the Arden and the Alpha, they're going to be able to soak up those bad mojos pretty easily. Alpha's already got some tier 1 shielding. You are just a tanky dad as the Arden. But this is going to be uh, the gold miner. Started up here by Pain, Red Mist is going to start to churn. Elite 8 do know this is happening, here comes the silence. Yeah, there's the wait for it. Heim's going to just face straight this brush. Ordain's going to come out as well, he's going to lock him in place. Hun is going to be able to get out of there. Red Mist opened up, Heim's going extremely low, popped into the passive. The gauntlet, the cage gets laid down behind, already falls, and they're going to be able to secure the gold miner as well. Pain moving forwards. Anime save me, hides underneath his turret, but losing one in the gold miner. That could result in a lot of damage on this tier, to, uh, on this tier 1. Rubbing salt in the wounds, they're even going to potentially go for this turret. The Red Mist is going to start to churn. Oh, it should just be able to take it out pretty easy with a couple of bad mojos. There's Pain Gaming taking the first turret of the game. I love what um, Muster was doing on that Rona. He was basically using the Red Mist as a zoning tool. Yes, okay, Jasmine Farrow and Falcon were doing the tanking and the majority of the damage to the turret, but he was using the Red Mist as a zoning tool to not allow Hun Jaegers or Anime Save Me to get into a position where they could try and defend the turret on the forefront. He was essentially saying, if you want to get to the guys taking the damage from the turret. If you want to go deal damage to Falcon or Jasmino, you actually have to get through this huge whirlwind of damage first. And I love Ronas that use that as that ability to, to as a zoning tool, not only as a, a way to sort of win and, and sort of dominate team fights, but also utilize it as the fact that it is a giant churning area of death that you shouldn't step in. That was a really nice use there from Muster. <laughs> really nice use of words as well, Alexander. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm 21 hours like awake right now. My, my vocabulary has gone out the window. <laughs> I'll buy you a dictionary, it's all good. Thank you. It's not a problem. Now, must have just been able to clear out this lane. With this turret down as well, does mean Pain are going to be able to push inside Elite Eight's jungle now. And it's up to them to kind of react. However, with Anime Saves Me, his ultimate available in a couple of seconds here as well. Oh, I'm trying to get over the wall there. <laughs> Didn't quite find the uh, the prime directive on the Elder Tree. Really important item spike picked up by the Alpha. She's one of the main users of this Aftershock. This is on 2.10, where Aftershock got a 1% nerf which was super impactful. But it still means that Alpha... You know, Ordain, getting... there comes the cage. It's a fight. That fearsome shade already sends Heim packing. He's just going to go down again. Han Jaegers now in the front line just gets torn apart. Pain fine too, and it's anime saves me. He's not saving his team this time around. And Pain really, really showing what they're made of. Alpha yet to pop a ultimate whatsoever. So he's always getting put into her heroic perk without even having using her ultimate. So that's, again, a, a bit of a misplay. Hasn't been able to get into sustained fights, utilizing the Aftershock with the core charge whatsoever. It has been literally pain gaming freight train throughout the entirety of this game so far. 
The one, I think, saving grace lies in Hunyegas. He's going to farm up. He's going to get towards that three item spike, the three offensive item spike. And he's going to look to try and do what Vox does best and kite sort of heavily against this tr triple melee composition in the late game. But that is a, a fair way off, in my opinion. I, I think he needs a reflex block. I think he needs his final item be that whatever it's going to be, a bone saw. Maybe bone saw will be the most applicable in this game, but you could even go for a, a, a sorrow blade if you wanted to. But you definitely need a reflex block, because if Ordain locks you down or you get pulled in by Torment, you are not going to have that ability to kite very easily. Pain Gaming proving that they really can push teams to their limits and push Elite Eight and force them to make mistakes and then capitalize on it as well. And I may say, he went for that engagement, remember? He did lay down at the cage and just wanted a fight. However, like you mentioned, Time not popping his uh, ultimate there. Didn't actually want to go for the giant explosion just well, to try and do some AoE damage. The problem was Muster and just we you know Pharah are already on top of him and they are way too tanky at this point in the game as well. And even that fearsome shade just completely annihilated. Well, you lose your ultimate if you don't use it. So you might as well use it. It buys you time and then it gives you a little bit of a, a zoning tool with the explosion. Ooh, Wafer does come out. There comes the cage again. Ordain's going to lock Anime Saves Me in. A nice trespass is going to send Ardent to death. And that'll be Hybe in the front line again. Just doesn't use the ultimate. Just didn't want to click the button. And now it's only, only the Vox to just scoot away. And that'll be Pain Gaming securing that Crystal Sentry. Two kills and a turret. Seriously, use it or lose it. That's how Alpha's ultimate works. If you just don't click the button, it's going to go away anyway. It buys you a bit of space, but obviously I don't think it would have had much impact across these last few fights. Pain Gaming are just rolling through 7,000 gold in the lead right now. Jasmina Ferrer now also with... Uh, Echo on the horizon is going to let, allow him to get the double um, trespass off if he absolutely needs to, which is obviously fantastic. Deals with at least one of those crucibles. We're not seeing two yet, but you know, some people do often play two crucibles into sometimes heavy Echo Captain CC. You never know, Heim might actually take up that burden of taking the second Crucible. We'll have to wait and find out because, in all honesty, it's all been about those trespasses. Even the Torments are doing a lot of work for the moment. And Muster's just making good use of that ability to just jump into the fray as soon as someone's pulled back. They're going to be able to take the Gold Miner as well. That Red Mist is going to be able to help secure it. And Gaming, right now, they are 7,000 gold in the lead. They are 7 0. They've got two turrets. What more can Elite 8 really do right now in order to stop the steamroll? That is pain gaming. Well, I think it's turtle game for Elite Eight right now, right? I said their win condition has now gone from Alpha. Alpha is no longer a win condition in any way, shape, or form. It's all on Vox at this point. Hunyegas is going to have to be the carry machine for this team if they are to succeed. Looks like he's actually going to go for a Sorrow Blade. I probably would have gone for the, the Bone Saw myself, but again, both of them work perfectly fine. Just he needs that three item spike. He needs to get a reflex block behind him and he just needs to have almost pinpoint perfect um, positioning. Alongside that anime save me, he finishes up that echo. Maybe then you're going to have the ability to zone out this heavy melee composition with all of those walls that you have to kind of negotiate your way through. So there are specific breakpoints for Elite Eight here that could give them a road back into this game. But even if they find those breakpoints, you're still, what, seven, eight thousand gold behind your opposition. That's seven thousand, eight or eight thousand gold worth of infusions or items that's going to give them just a pure stat advantage in a fight. Even if you've hit these major power spikes for your team, that power spike could be well below where the enemy team is regardless because of that gold difference. Well, right now, we've got to see if Elite 8 can come back into it. And it might just hinge on Anime Save Me just pulling out a double gauntlet if, if, if he can pick up that Echo in time. Right now, their base is in very major threat. Pain are going to have to just play this one out like they've been playing it. They just kind of send Just We Know Farrah forward, get a couple of hooks, torment them backwards, let Muster just charge in into the fray and then pull, the, um, pull them away from there. I'm seeing a lot of Cloud9 in the way that, that Pain are playing this series, actually, and we'll have to get a fight. War Trez, there's the trespass, going to get blocked this time. Red Mist now churning through, save me and, Hus uh, and the uh, Alpha. However, that cage will get laid down. Doesn't quite find any stuns just yet. Ordain, the second trespass. Trespass to stun. Nice into the fray. Lands on two members. And they say me does manage to get out alive for the time being, but the carries are forced underneath their turrets. Don't get any kills, though. So that might not be enough for Pain to look to capitalize on this turret. They have to go up against a fairly healthy team at this point forward. No Crystal Sentry lives remaining. And like I said, this has been a very Cloud9 esque game from Pain Gaming. Just taking global objective after global objective off the map. Muster has gone for the journey boots. I thoroughly approve of journey boots. 
especially if you're trying to chase down a mobile target. It's something that we've seen Ronas do today, and it has been helping Sir Mustard. He's 4 0 3 at this point in time. There are metal jackets starting to open up as well. Falcon's got his. I, I imagine Sir Mustard is going to work towards that or an Atlas Pauldrons. Again, like I said, just massive item spikes starting to open up, and that's just that gold advantage that Payne have. Exactly that. I mean, this, if you honestly remove the names right now, you'd think maybe this is a kind of game three from uh, Cloud9 versus Elite 8, but this is only game number one of Pain Gaming versus Elite. Now, the question is, really, do they kind of force something here? They've got 40, so they've got 20 seconds to that Kraken spawns. They could easily set up some kind of sneaky maneuver because they took that Crystal Century down earlier. Tw another 12 minute elimination of that Crystal Century just shows how aggressive these teams at Worlds are playing. Oh, they yeah. are just pushing their advantages time and time again and being able to set up these fights because they know Elite Eight cannot face them in the 3v3. Elite Eight just need to find the one pickoff on Falcon or uh, uh, muster just catch them out alone do a bit of damage to them but it's so tough for them to do that right now i think the story of this uh, series so far or the day of so far has been the teams that can execute the early game and execute it well kind of have those dominant victories and then it more comes down to that compositional advantage in the late game if it goes further than that but cloud nine and a lot of other teams have shown us if you can execute the early game and you can execute well you you just can kind of steamroll your opposition snowball is definitely the name of the game right now that's exactly what they're looking for. 15 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. They instantly start up that Kraken. And the AAR here, however, there's a nice chain onto Anime Saves Me. No Torment just used just yet. That Triant, though, almost signaling them to death. Trespass gets blocked. A nice fish from Shade, though, finds three. And that will be Han Jaegers falling. The cage gets laid down. Hein finally activates that Termination Protocol, but can't quite find the damage. Ends up going down regardless. And that's Pain Gaming finding two and finding the Kraken. Oh, what do you block? If you hunt Jaegers, you don't even have a reflex block at this point in time, so you're relying, relying solely on the Crucible. He manages to get out of the Ordain with the Crucible, but then the Trespass comes in straight afterwards. He was a sitting duck with that meat grinder of an ultimate from Rona. Take a look at it again. See this? Ordained, he gets through. He doesn't, he, no, he doesn't even get through. I think he gets chain CC from the Ordained into the Trespass, and then obviously from following that, the Fearsome Shade always also gets him. And again, this lack of reflex block potentially causing that. Definitely feel like against this much CC, should have been considering a reflex block earlier, but I thought he was able to get out of the Ordained. I think he literally ran to the edge of the Ordained and got stunned, followed by a Trespass stun, followed by uh, the, or, the Fear from the Fearsome Shade. So that, that box wasn't going anywhere. Try kiting when you're layered upon layered of CC landing on your head. That's quite scary, and I'm surprised Honegas hasn't actually got a reflex block right now, in all honesty, with the amount of CC from the level six mark onwards. In front of level two, Mark Roberts and Orlon, see with that Ordain. They're going to be able to open up the base here. Another Ordain lands. It's going to land on Han Jaegers. He just gets annihilated. Trespass not even needed. Did get blocked in the end by Elite Eight. But two members falling extremely low. Termination protocol and he explodes. But the problem is you've got no damage. And that will lead Pain Gaming to take two, take the base and take game number one. Very, very dominant from Pain Gaming. Very Cloud Nine esque. Like we said, they took global objectives. They focused them. They took aggressive team fights. They didn't hold back. They found their opportunities to engage. Looks like they learned some lessons in that series that they had up against Cloud Nine earlier today. And I think that the the desk really summed it up before we even got into the game.